Anti-corruption works when there are people who are violating rules for some reasonable reasons, and there are other people who are violating rules for unreasonable reasons. And if you can identify the people who are violating the rules for reasonable reasons and solve those problems, then, then you expand the they number of people. Allies. They become your allies. And then you minimize the number of people who are the true thieves, who are the their small subset of people who are genuine thieves and free riders. And when you can bring them down to a manageable number, like 10% or so, then your vertical enforcement starts working, right? Because then the peers start saying, actually, we're all following rules. Who do you think is the, you are that you can you can go to the front of the queue? Go back and stand at the back of the queue. Exactly what happens when you break a queue in London is it's not the police who stop you. It's your peers who say, you please go back to the back of the queue. So if your peers are not saying anything, if you're so powerful that you can go to the front of the queue and everybody else has violated something, so they're all going to keep quiet. So I think that's one strategy. One strategy is in areas where you have reasonable people who are forced to violate rules, then you can address that problem through all kinds of horizontal measures, and they in turn become the horizontal pressure on the, on the real violators. But there are other areas where the situation is so bad that almost everybody is violating the rules, and you're not going to get, there's no one you can say is reasonable or unreasonable. They're all equally unreasonable or equally reasonable. So in the Niger Delta, they're all actually reasonable thieves because they have no other alternative in life, right? So you can't say there's a bunch there who are free riders. They're actually all of them equally reasonable or equally unreasonable. And there we say there's no immediate anti-corruption solution now. What you have to have is a development solution, an exit solution. And I think it is really important to be able to distinguish between these different types of corruption. Otherwise, you lump everything in the same box and everything then fails.